What's good, y'all? Welcome back to Kitaj NBA, and the NBA Finals start tomorrow, so I thought I'd just get one last video out. I'll probably do one tomorrow before the Finals start, a full preview of Game 1. Hopefully, people watch that. Uh, <laughs> I just hope, yeah, because the preview last time, that was that was pretty shit. Anyway, <laughs> um, I got some uh, my team against my friend in the backdrop right now, because the highlights, um, they're on my ass with the highlights. They don't want me to monetize the videos, so... You know, I'll probably do some highlights, like, for each game, but, you know, I just won't have those monetized. Anyway, time to get to the point of the video. Um, we're going to be counting down who I think are going to be the top five players in this year's NBA Finals Series. Now, let me make this clear. I'm not talking about the top five players playing in the series. You could look at this list and, you know, read it like that. Um, I personally wouldn't, but... This list is going to be about who I think will have the best finals, the most success. If you did watch my other videos, you know that I have the Warriors in six. However, don't rule out, you know, me thinking the Cavs would win because I said as well, if the Warriors don't win game six in Cleveland, I have the Cavs in seven. Yeah, a little bit weird just because the fact that, you know, those would mean both teams in my predictions would be closing out on their on the road team's floor. Um, but, you know, home court advantage isn't everything. Um, the Cavs closed out in Golden State last year. I just feel like, you know, if you get LeBron in the Game 7 situation, he's going to be impossible to stop, even more so than he already is. And I feel like that if the Warriors get a chance to close out in Game 6, this time they'll take advantage of it. You know, they know what they're up against. Um, it's a game where they think, okay, we got to do this. You know, we're not going to let it slip away like we did last year. They're definitely, you know, they look more locked in than they did last year for sure. So I think they would take advantage of that. Now, to the list. We're going to start off at number five with Golden State Warriors power forward Draymond Green. Now, I did put Draymond Green in my list of top 10 players. I posted that on Twitter like a week ago or so, and it was pinned to my page for a while. Um, but basically, Draymond Green is maybe the most complete player on this Golden State Warriors team. And I say he's a top 10 player in the NBA because of the impact of his game. Now, of course, the first reason why you'd say, oh, no, he's not a top 10 player it's because of the points. He averages like 11 points a game. And that's like, if you average 11 points a game, you're automatically not allowed to be a top 10 player. But the impact Draymond has on a game is just not measured that way. He knows he doesn't need to score. When you have Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Kevin Durant, the most lethal trio of one, two, and three guys on a team ever. I mean, I don't think you could name a squad in existence that had a better one, two, and three than the Golden State Warriors of this year. So when you have those three guys, especially scoring wise, I don't think any one, two, and three combos ever combined for more points. Um, that's just me, but you know, maybe, I, I mean, maybe like back in the 60s or 70s when, you know, you could score a ton of points or I don't know. I, I really like in recent history, just say. Um, Draymond Green's like, well, why do I need to score 20 points a game? We already got Clay dropping 20, Curry with 25, Durant with 25, you know, they don't need another guy to drop 20. Draymond Green does everything else. He's the best defender on the team. He's the best playmaker on the team, and that's exactly what he's going to act as during this series and why it's so important. I mean, Draymond might be the most important player on this team, and it's because there's so many valuables that come with this guy. I mean, the defense, he's going to win Defensive Player of the Year. If he doesn't, he should, I think, because look at the versatility on that end. He can guard Kyrie, and then he can guard LeBron, and then he can guard Kevin Love, and then he can guard Tristan Thompson. He can guard everybody on the team. That's something barely anybody in the league can do. But Draymond can do it, and he can do it extremely well. He'll guard Kyrie better than most people, and he'll guard Tristan Thompson better than most people, and he'll guard LeBron better than almost anybody. You know what I'm saying? So that's extremely valuable. He's the anchor of their defense, and he's also the guy that gets their offense going. There's a reason why he leads the team in assists. He averages eight assists a game as a power forward. He's the initiator. He gets people their shots. He gets Steph Curry and Klay Thompson and Kevin Durant the ball i mean that's huge not only that but he throws great lobs he knows how to you know he's great in terms of assist to turnover ratio he's just a very 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 smart player um and he's such a positive effect that's why he's so important and that's why i think he's gonna flourish in this series and they need him why i think he'll be fit i picked the warriors winning this series and they won't win this series without a good performance from draymond green because draymond green is likely gonna spend a lot of time on lebron james if not lebron he'll spend a lot of time on kevin love and he's going to be the guy getting guys shots. Like I said, Steph Curry's offense is going to depend, you know, on how good of a job Draymond Green is of setting him up. 
and Draymond Green always does a good job of setting him up. It's all up to Steph Curry to make those shots, and you know, that he's a reason why it's so easy for Steph Curry to get into his offense, why it's so easy for him to do, I mean, aside from the fact that Steph Curry is just a freak of nature when it comes to hitting shots from way outside, and you know, in terms of just converting shots in general, Draymond Green gets guys open, he sets good screens, and yeah, maybe not all of those are legal, but his impact on the game it's huge and his impact on the game i think is also going to be huge during the nba finals and number four on this list i have kyrie irving um kyrie yeah he could be higher um but i think you know that's just because of the fact that i think kyrie's gonna do his damage in scoring i think he's gonna have a year similar to the one he had last year in the nba finals where he's gonna put up a ton of points but the problem with kyrie irving is i don't think he's gonna give a lot on the defensive end in fact i think he's gonna be a target on the defensive end and, you know, he's a lot more limited than a guy like Steph Curry on in, in terms of, you know, he can score the ball, but what else is he going to give you? He's going to be a great player in this series, a positive impact for sure. And that's because of his scoring. It's because, you know, that's why he was a positive impact last year, because he was able to put up 28 points, because he was able to have those huge games at the end where he was putting up 41 and where he hit the game winner basically in game seven. Those offensive displays down the stretch and ones, you know, you can't stop him. No one can stop him from scoring the basketball. That's going to help him a lot. And I think that he's going to have another series like that, you know, to make it interesting. I'm just hoping for a game seven. I really am. For me, it's like I got to be optimistic because we've had a terrible playoffs. One of the worst playoffs. It's not the worst I've ever seen. It's been bad. Um, The series has got to do something to make up for it. At least try to make up for it. And Kyrie Irving... Him being competitive is a key as well as, you know, Kevin Love. That's a guy we really need to see to get going, and he's not on this list. But, I mean, Kyrie Irving, he has the, he has all the offense in the world. I mean, he has all the talent in the world on that offense in terms of scoring the basketball, and he's going to do it. He's going to hit the big shots. This is where he lives in the big games, the big matchups. You know, this is his time. And we saw it last year. He lives for these games. So I think that we're going to see a big performance out of him just not enough in the end you know to win this series i mean maybe they maybe they will. i hope they do i'm rooting for the Cavs. i i don't really don't like either of these teams but kevin durant getting a ring is literally the worst possible scenario for me speaking of kevin durant he's number three on this list i think kevin durant will have a good series not a great one but a good one um and i think that he will you know maybe put up something like 25 8 and 4 or something like that you know about his average stats for the season right i think that's something he put up um and i think he'll be efficient with it i think that he's ready i think that he you know he's in a role where he can everything just comes easier to him that was one of the reasons why he was so efficient this year just because he's got all these great players around him to set him up and make space for him to get quality shots off and he's done that and he's been really really good this year um, I think he's the third best player in the NBA and Kevin Durant look he's gonna score a lot in this series he's gonna get points he's gonna get buckets but where it really matters in this series for Kevin Durant is when you get down to the end of the game now if Kevin Durant's so good in this series that you know they can blow the Cavs out of the water in games and not have to worry about the clutch then look that's great but I'm concerned about Kevin Durant and I'm not really concerned because I don't want him to win but look if I was a Warriors fan I would be concerned about Kevin Durant and this team when you get down to the end is kevin durant your guy what sh- type of shots is kevin durant going to get at the end of the game because in that okc series remember how he went out okay maybe kevin durant's a little more hungry than he was then i think he is um but look this is i i haven't seen kevin durant out duel lebron ever i really haven't lebron james you know maybe okay maybe you know one of those games in the past few years and maybe you could say look that game this year where they beat him by 30 40 but look i mean what what do you be going up against here is it was just really the warriors against lebron what was he supposed to do um that being said kevin durant's got to bring it to lebron i mean he's really gotta make an effort to at least be almost as good as lebron try to match him i think that's what he's gonna do in terms of his objective i don't think he's gonna match him but look that should be his goal and that will make for a better series for sure if we see you know these two guys playing at the top of their game that would be great at number two we have stephen curry steph curry man i mean he just doesn't have a great finals last year he didn't have a great one the year before even though i think you know he might maybe like i'm trying to think about the 2015 finals mvp a lot of people say it should have been lebron i don't like that whole notion of giving it to the guy on the losing team um even though you know lebron was terrific 
Andre Iguodala, should he really have won it over Steph Curry um, that year? A lot of people would say yeah, but look, Steph Curry put up 26 a night, and he wasn't really bad in any way. I mean, he got it going towards the end of the series, which is where it was most important. Um, so, you know, that series was not bad for him. I don't like when people talk about how he was bad in that finals. He wasn't good last year, though. I mean, that's one thing. He got completely outdueled by Kyrie Irving, a guy that he really shouldn't be. And you guys might be wondering, why is Kyrie below Steph and Durant, both of them? Well, he's below Durant because I think Durant will contribute in other areas. Durant's going to have to guard LeBron a lot of the time. And it's going to be going up against LeBron a lot of the time. He has a challenge awaiting for him on both sides of the ball. I think he's going to step up. I think he's going to, you know, do a lot of things in multiple ways that can help his team win the games. Now, why is Curry ahead of Kyrie? Because I think we're going to see an inspired performance from, from Steph Curry this year. I don't think we're going to see what we saw last year. I think we're going to get Steph Curry's best NBA Finals yet. And look, as much as I don't want this to happen, even though I like Steph Curry, I do. I'm not going to lie. I don't like really almost anybody else on the Warriors, but I do like Steph Curry. And I would like to see him, you know, have a great series and lose. You know, that would be like ideal for me. But I feel like Steph Curry is going to, I think he's going to be there. I think he's going to be there for the whole game. I think he's going to step up in the fourth quarter. I think he's going to make some big shots in this series. I think he's going to redeem himself. I think that ever since that game seven, you know, this has just been, you know, he's been staying up late at night, just thinking about that, just thinking about that shot by Kyrie Irving or that behind the back pass he threw or missing that shot on Kevin Love. I think that it's haunting him. And I think that when he gets that challenge, you know, it's a make or break moment. Obviously, he might fold again. It could happen. If that moment comes, let's just pray. Like, again, like, I just want it to come because, like, please, like, let's just have a great series. I don't want to blow out. I don't want to sweep. Please don't be a sweep. Even if the Cavs sweep, I'm still not going to be happy. But Stephen Curry, I think he's going to hit the big shots. I think he's going to average, like, 28 or 30. Is he going to win finals MVP? Yeah, I said he's going to win finals MVP. That was my prediction. But he's not the best player in the series. How could he not be the best player in the series and win finals MVP? Well, that's because LeBron James is playing in the series. And look, they're not going to give the finals MVP to LeBron if they lose. Okay, they're not. They would If they did, the, they would have did it last year. I mean, not last year, the year before, 2015. Um, and still, I wouldn't want them to do that. I think LeBron is going to have a great series. I think LeBron is out to, you know, he says, oh, I'm not chasing the GOAT. Well, everybody's talking about this. Look, this is his legacy defining series right here. If he wins this series... Everyone's talking about, look, he's taking that huge step in terms of his legacy. If he's already past Jordan, he's way past Jordan now. If he's not past Jordan, maybe he's tied with Jordan. Like, you know, that's that's the type of definition that this series holds. That's what it means for his legacy. So it's huge. I mean, this is LeBron's like biggest series, almost probably ever, other than like his the one that, you know, the one against Mavericks and Thunder. Like that would be his first one. Um, this is is not like anything we've seen before. Because this team is better than the Warriors team is better than it was last year. LeBron James is better than he was last year. He's ready. But is his team ready? That's what I think it's going to come down to. I think LeBron, it's, it's like a constant we're going to see a great version of LeBron in the finals. I mean, when was the last time LeBron had a legitimately bad NBA finals game? Pretty long time ago. So for me, I think LeBron's going to outplay everybody. And I don't think it's going to be close. I think he's going to make Kevin Durant his, you know what? <laughs> um, the problem is, I just, I can't see the Cavs being, you know, superior for an entire series. Maybe a few games, um, but look, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen in a game seven where LeBron just takes over the game and Kyrie takes over the game and they just shoot the lights out and just, you know, they can't be stopped. That's my, that's my prediction. So top five players in this series. I want LeBron, Curry, Durant, Kyrie, Draymond. Um, honorable mention. Um, I, I kind of want to go Andre Iguodala, like with Dark Horse, or maybe like Tristan Thompson. I know I didn't say Kevin Love because I don't really know what to expect from Kevin Love. Same with Clay Thompson. I don't know really what know to expect from him either. Um, but one of these role players, like like I said, Iguodala or Thompson or something like that. Um, one of those guys. There's gonna be a role player on one of these teams that just plays out of their mind. Um, I think whoever it is, maybe Jarrah Smith really gets up for it. We'll see. Uh, it's going to be fun. Final start tomorrow. It's going to be a blast. I'm out. Thanks for watching. What do you guys think? Who do you guys think are going to be the top five players in this series? Let me know. Subscribe if you're new and I'm out. Thanks for watching y'all. Peace.